passed away. We wanted men. Podcast, get out the way. Get out the way. Move. Podcast, get out the way. <laughs> Welcome to episode 132 of the Smuggler's Galaxy podcast. Uh, it's going to be a loose one today because it's Sunday afternoon. It's time changed. I played a show last night, so we are all kinds of messed up today. Jason, how are you? I'm well. Despite the, the the hour change, hopefully it's Tuesday for our listeners or uh, past Tuesday. So hopefully they're adjusting to the uh, the time change. No problems. Yeah, dude it it, it always it always kind of messes with you a little bit. We I played a show last night, so I didn't get to home till like one thirty. You get to bed at two, and then you wake up at ten, and you're like, "What? Oh no, it's really time change time!" And it you know half your day is gone before you wake up, and then. I'm in the kitchen making coffee this morning and I'm like, why didn't it? I'm, oh, hold on. Let me, let me, let me start that over again. So, you know, we're so used to all the clocks automatically changing on their own, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I'm in the kitchen making coffee and I'm looking at my clocks in the kitchen going, why didn't it, any of these change? So I had yeah, to change them. Cause it's manual. Yeah. What's that? Even the cars do it now. Yeah. My car didn't. I had to change it. Oh, I hadn't I paid should, attention. In my I should cars. also mention we're recording in the middle of the day and we had planned to record like at seven and you said, let's just get this out of the way. So that's where the move podcast gets out, get out of the way song came in to play with that whole thing. So I just well, you know, I'm sitting there playing the listener. Yeah. Well, I was playing video games and I'm like, you know, last of us comes on tonight and then, you know, dinner and I'm probably going to be too tired to, you know, just the time change and everything's going to hit us and it's probably going to be a really, you know, tiring cop podcast. And I just, yeah, let's just get it out the way now because, you know, we're going to eat late and all that crap. So let's go. I was painting action figures. I was customizing more when you had messaged me. W- were you turning his blue pants silver? Uh, well, it's, a bad, it's a it's a bad 40 year old virgin reference. Oh, but yes, I was. <laughs> I was like, wait, how do you know that? <laughs> That's kind of sad. <laughs> that I played right into that stereotype. <laughs> Dang. I gotta change my life a little bit. It's either I'm turning my blue, I'm either turning your blue pants silver or your silver pants blue. And it's it's been a minute since I've seen that movie. But yeah, I keep looking for uh, I mean, let's just get into it. I'm making more Cantina aliens and I keep trying to what? find different bodies, but I have like I'll have four aliens in this cantina with Greedo's body because <laughs> hey, there's just not? not a lot out there. Right. Well, I mean, dude, look at the Masters of the Universe. They used two bucks for that whole run and yeah. nobody said anything. The challenge is to uh, to make him look different. So I was painting Greedo, who is blue, silver. So <laughs> <laughs> that's where that fits in. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah. So did you uh, get anything fun this week? Yeah. I got a bunch of stuff. How about you? Uh, Yeah, I did all right. Nothing Star Wars related. Well, one thing's major Star Wars related, but. Well, it was a gluttonous week because uh, so Hasbro had their warehouse sale. They're offering 35% off of stuff wow. uh-huh. on, on Hasbro Pulse. So I got the Black Series Grogu for $16 and, then, and I'll pay for that for, for that action figure i know it's a repaint and repack but what what all does it come with for 16 dollars? it comes with the pram it comes with the mandalorian um necklace that he wears it comes with i'm doing this by memory i think a frog and a cup and a did and then the ball like that yeah it comes with this pram like i said but okay well for the pram i'd pay that that because i think i'd pay that for the pram uh because i think the original one was like 10 bucks yeah so I mean, for sixteen, I can't go wrong with that. 
No. Same thing with Migs Mayfield. I got that for 16 bucks. That's the new version from season one of The Mandalorian. I also got the Greedo that I was just painting. And then I also got another Obi-Wan Kenobi, a wandering you just, Jedi. You just wanted that because it was Ewan. He doesn't have a face, so oh. the face is off the body. It doesn't matter. Oh, um, okay. My son had a, we were up in Dalton, Georgia yesterday and um, driving up and we're like 10 minutes away. And all of a sudden my car says, your car's overheating. And I'm like, wait, what? Oh, geez. And uh, it didn't have any radiator fluid. So I dropped him off at his robotics thing and Walmart was just right around the corner. And while I was in there, got the radiator fluid. Was able to put that in. We're all fine there. No problems. Got to figure out why I don't have radiator fluid. That's a different question. But yeah. It's there now. But while I was in there, they had series two, the Micro Galaxy Squadron. And after the latest episode of The Mandalorian with the gauntlet, I picked up one of those new gauntlets and I opened it. Uh-huh. And also, you know, sometimes with those Micro Galaxy Squadrons, they put them up high on the shelf and then they fall over into the next aisle. Oh. So I went over there to look, and that was all the cars. And uh, they didn't have, <laughs> they didn't have any. But I did see a uh, Breath of the Wild Link hanging out with the cars. Mm-hmm. And so it was an impulse buy. <laughs> Pick that up, dude. I thought you weren't going to collect anything but Star Wars. I wasn't. I, this is just a one and done. And I checked out, and it said Sonic Plush, ten dollars. So I'm like, all right, I'll. I don't know why it says Sonic, because it's clearly not a Sonic the Hedgehog. It's a Link, but... And how much are those supposed to go for? 30 bucks online. Jeez. I don't okay. know if I would pay 30 bucks, but I'll pay 10 bucks for this guy. All right. Um, the other thing I picked up was a Micro Machines Wampa bagged, baggy. Oh, nice. It's, the... it's the mini transforming uh, heads that turn into a playset when you flip it open. Yes. I got that. I got the Wampus, and now I'm closer to completing that one. Um, did, you, had... did, did you see the ones that were on Deal or No Deal a couple of weeks ago? Somebody yeah, had I got, them? Yeah, I got those from Brad. Oh, nice. So you got those. Sweet. Yeah, because I was making a deal with them for some original Micro Machine art that he had that I picked up as well. So we just bundled that one. So awesome. I wasn't in... I, I wanted all those bags because it's all sealed, but at the same time, uh, I was buying some original art, and I didn't want to just <laughs> make it even more money. So, You're but right. it's um an unproduced playset. It's the still the small uh, little micro machine heads that open up, and it has just one figure inside. It was Chewbacca. Um, interestingly, instead of revising it, he just taped over the revisions. So mm-hmm. underneath, there's a completely different playset. It's Chewbacca that flips open, and originally he was supposed to be like standing in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon. They decided to change Chewbacca in a seated position. Uh-huh. And so you see it in the Falcon. They never made it, but it's still an original piece. Earl McCarthy, I'm in love. I have that, it. That's an awesome piece. And, and and you know, you got a good deal on that thing, too. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm ecstatic to have yeah. some original Micro Machine art. That's awesome. Because I know what the, they had a Wampa one for a minute, and it went for probably double or triple what you paid for that one. So. Yeah, I think that's a case where the guy paid too much for it, maybe, and uh-huh. can't go below that. I don't know. I'm right. just guessing. Well, that's what stinks sometimes. You know, uh, uh, you know, you overpay for something, and you either got to cut bait and lose money, or hope somebody's going to overpay for it too. But yeah, how about you? What'd you pick up? You see, you got something big. Um, yeah, well, I got, let me start off with the little thing first. Uh, my wife and I, I've been kind of wanting an iPhone and <laughs> we were watching TV and they, uh, Verizon had this ad. They were like, get the iPhone, the tablet and the watch and for free. So I said, Hey babe, look uh, this up. And about an hour later, she messages me going, uh, it's ordered. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the light side of the force. You are now it's an been iPhone a, user. Yeah, it was been a really weird week trying to get all that doing. And every now and again, I see myself, I feel, you know, you're trying to do the, like the swipe up like the Android used to do. And I'm like, it doesn't work that way. Are you trying to find the back button? Because iPhones, the back button's in the app and it's not on the phone, you know, and, and Android's the back button's on the phone, if that makes sense. So you're, yeah, yeah. you know, you're, you're looking for the, how to get out of things and, and learning it. So it, it's been uh, interesting. And those new uh, 
iPhone watches, the Apple watches are pretty insane. I was at uh, the show last night and it starts dinging and it's like, you're in a loud environment. I'm like, no, fool in. <laughs> I'm causing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's me that's loud. So they have like a, a decibel meter and stuff on it. It's just got, I know I'm like at the tip of the iceberg with it, but it's been, it's been pretty, pretty crazy. And cool. uh, yeah, that's, that was one thing I got. And then uh, I also talking to to my wife and I'm like, Hey, Disney's doing after hour <laughs> events at Hollywood studios in May. Uh, do you think I could go? And she's like, sure. So we, I booked a trip to Disney world <laughs> in May. So uh gonna go do a, a single trip, uh solo trip and did to Disney in May. So that should be fun. Single rider line. That's right. Well, I was watching Tim Tracker did uh, was at the, the after hours event in January and it was apparently sold out and Rise of the Resistance was a five minute wait. Yeah. So you he go. said, huh? Go. Yep. I'm like, so I'm like, if I spend four hours back in galaxy's edge and can ride rise of resistance like two maybe three times and smugglers run a couple of times and just experience galaxy's edge uh for those four hours i'll be a happy man yeah when you're in olga's cantina you gotta get a yub dub cup for me yeah the new one the repaint yeah it's a re it's not a repaint <laughs> it's a remold is it a remold okay different color clay they're but it's the, the same. It's the, it's the same mug. Uh, the first edition was brown, and now they're on the second edition, which is bluish green. Yeah. I wonder so. how long they're going to be doing that, because when I went in 2019, everything was first edition, so it took that long for them to make their way through. I mean, granted, you did have the pandemic in, in between all that. Yeah, uh, slow things down. Yeah, so it's just, did they plan on it taking two, you know, five, four years to get through the first edition stuff, or... You know, is it whatever? I, I, I don't Who knows? Know. Who knows? But uh, well, yeah, cool. I may, yeah, I may do savvies depending if they have the new lightsabers or if I have time. Or I definitely want to get a chopper because they have chop the build a droid chopper. So mm -hmm. that's yeah, I'm pretty excited. Mm -hmm. So I'll uh, I'll probably spend. the The day of the after hours event. Well, this is the plan: spend the day of the after hours event in Epcot. Then go over to Hollywood Studios about five o'clock and then spend the next day at Magic Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully get to go you do Universal on Friday. So we'll see how good it works. It's awesome. Yeah. You'll have fun. We might be going to Epcot in June, but I'm not going to hit Galaxy's Edge, unfortunately. So, dude, I don't know how you do it because you all the time, you're not all the time, but you're down there a couple of times a year and you're like, yeah, I'm at Disney, but I'm not going to Galaxy's Edge. It drives me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> it's right there. I drove six hours and it's right there. Let me go. Yeah. You, no, you we feel went like... there last time. Right. Yeah. That's my family talking. That's what they sound like. It, literally. That's what they sound like. <laughs> but then At my, least my... that's what they sound like to me when they're telling me we were there last time. We were Katie Park Hop, man. We don't have the ticket. But then my son, they went to Epcot. My son and his fiance went to Epcot on Friday, and then he sends me a picture of them when Galaxy's Edge at the, in the Smuggler's Run queue. And I'm like, you little bastard. Mm-hmm. It'll they be do fun. That. He, huh? It'll be fun. You'll have fun. Oh, I can't wait. He, uh, They'll do that to me. And my son and his his fiance will do that to me. Anytime they go to Disney, like, we got to go to Galaxy's Edge and send my dad a picture because they, they live down there. So, mm -hmm. you know, them, it's nothing. Yeah. To them, it's just another Tuesday. Right. Well, that's what my wife says about Disney World. She's like, eh, I've been there. I live down there. It's no big deal to me. I'm like, but it's Disney. She goes, yeah, you know how much a pain in the butt it was to me to go to Disney when I went? Because, you know, they did it. They'd always you'd pack a lunch. You'd go when you have to go get your lunch. You know, it wasn't a you didn't get to get immersive. It was sort of like I was trying to talk to somebody last night about I guess it's sort of like Six Flags is to us. And she's like, what's Six Flags? It's an unsafe <laughs> theme park. I, right. Allegedly, before anyone starts forwarding this on to six park lawyer or six flag lawyers. Yeah, I, I haven't been to Six Flags in probably five or six years, or longer than that, six to ten years. I'm like, man, I should go because but I remember back when I was a teenager, you could get the season pass, you know, and you'd spend your summers there. Yeah. You go you go down there five or six times a summer. Yeah, I, I 
the last time I was there is 2018. A lot of the DC roller coasters were like hurting my back. The wooden roller coasters just need to be torn down. Monster Mansion is is the thing. I'd go to Six Flags just for Monster Mansion and then mm. go home. That thing is hilarious to me. Oh man. You know you're getting old and you're like the roller coasters were hurting my back. But yeah, they were. They were just not good roller coasters. These things are like 40 years old and not good. Yeah, compared when you ride like Haggard's at Universal and then you ride exactly. Six Flags, it's a totally different experience. Anyways, I have some news. Is yeah. that all you picked up? Just the tickets to Disney? Yeah, that's it. I missed the the swap meet yesterday because I just had too much going on. I just wanted to. I was feeling lazy yesterday morning, so we didn't go. But yeah, nothing. That's it. Um, quick trivia: How long is an Imperial Star Destroyer? I don't know. Throw something out there. Uh, a mile. More. Two miles. More. Five miles. More. 10 miles? That's 12. 12? Jeez. I figured after 10, you're going to go to 15. and then I was Right. Like, well, I was like, is this a dad joke or are you being no, serious? You want a dad joke? Uh, <laughs> I have one of those prepared if you Let's want. Let's go. Um, uh, a guy goes up to a widow at a funeral and says, can I say a word? And she says, sure. So he goes up. He says, bargain. And after the funeral, the... <laughs> you're laughing. Aren't you? you already heard this one? <laughs> you finish it, yes. Yeah, the... After the funeral, the widow goes up to him and she says, that meant a great deal. <laughs> but I'll bargain. Watch. Anyways, news. <laughs> uh, it seems like Lucasfilm is starting to put some expectations in place for celebration. Okay. Um, because Variety just released a bunch of information about their movie slate. They're trying to dial this in and get it right. It seems that Patty Jenkins' Rogue Squadron is off the table. Okay. Along with Kevin Feige's Star Wars film, that's off the table, according to Variety. These are not yeah. happening. Taika is still moving forward with his Star Wars movie, and he might also be starring in it. That's what he does, though. Why would people be surprised about that? I'm not surprised. I thought it would be more of a secondary character, not the main star. Oh, okay. I just, I'm just worried because most of his stuff is more on the slapsticky, humorous side, right? Which Star Wars has, but we need some more drama, and we need some, you know, like a serious character. <laughs> it can't all just be like Love and Thunder, where there was like every character was comedy relief. No one was the straight character. So hopefully they dial that in. Mm -hmm. The Star Wars film. Directed by Sharmeen Abad, O B A I D Chinoy, Ab O O B A I D. Don't ask me how to pronounce. I know. It, I'm dude. trying to sound it out. And written by Damon Lindelof and Justin Britt Gibson is still moving forward. That's the one that takes place after Rise of Skywalker. Um, Variety concluded that Lucasfilm is supposed to to announce their entire slate of movies or what the what to expect at celebrations. So wow, I would expect that to happen soon. You lucky people in Europe, you're getting a good celebration. Yep, they've got a bunch of new uh, uh, panels that they announced this week. There's one about uh celebration returns launching a must-see showcase that'll kick off the week's week uh, lucasfilm's current crop of live action filmmakers will be joined by special guests to discuss star wars adventures including the mandalorian and or and more probably ahsoka um well, there's already been a, an ahsoka panel announced yeah i, I thought, was gonna I was, say it was the like... next one is ahsoka <laughs> yeah so i'm sure we'll get a trailer oh for God. that will and we, we get to see it though I don't think so because Lucasfilm is very uh they control that. The the first Mandalorian trailer we got months after celebration, and that was shown at celebration. Right. I mean, there's actually like people walking up and down the aisles with watching for people with cameras. So you gotta be really secretive if you're gonna record anything. Yeah. There's a dark side panel with Ian McDermott, Andy Circus, and Gwendolyn Christie. Do it. Do it. Supreme Leader Snoke and uh, Captain Phasma. Oh, nice. There's a separate panel there. There's a panel about Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, just about the the panel itself with Ewan, Hayden, and Indira, Indira 
Varma with Vivian Lyra Blair who played um Leia. Oh, he's he's yawning. He's bored with this one. Okay. Sorry, no, it. I'm I'm bored. I'm so, tired, but someone I'm thinking, I'm like, Obi-Wan how could Kenobi. I huh? Someone doesn't care about Obi-Wan Kenobi. Oh no, I'm just series. more thinking. I'm like, how could I sneak into Narayan's bags? <laughs> you could be a golf club. <laughs> just pack yourself up in a golf case and yeah. uh there's another imagineering panel about galaxy's edge it's like what new stuff are you going to tell us because this is like the same old same old right i don't i that'd be the one that i wouldn't be excited about then there's the one about the bad batch which bad batch this week was amazing yeah um with uh d bradley baker athena was executive producer and athena portillo and jennifer colbert and michelle ang who plays omega she'll be on stage omega. And, and then there's the visions one with a bunch of the producers and the studios that are involved with the season two they'll have a stage and then the last one i have here written down is uh the jazz Wars one which will be monday april 10th from two to three on the twin sun stage Let's It'd throw be- it on a time when nobody's gonna be there. That's like the yeah, that's the end of it. Yeah. That's the last day. And it's late in the afternoon. That's like one of the last panels. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Lucasfilm. All right. I would stay for it if I had the ability to, but yeah. Um, quietly, Hasbro announced a bunch of new retro figures. Yeah. For this fall. Um, they didn't go on for pre-order. They'll just be available when they're available. You know, they're getting rid of the pre-order stuff. It's Boba Fett and the Dune Sea, so it's that brown robe look that he's got. Fennec Shand, the Mandalorian, which is, I think, a straight repack from a previous version of the Mandalorian. Same thing with Grogu. What? But he has the dark saber. He's got the dark saber. Yes. Yeah. But didn't uh, got Moff Gideon have the dark saber? Yeah. So yes, he did. So they're repacking it in a different way. Uh, Kersantan, not Black K. Hey, you said it right. Kersantan. Kersantan. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. It's in the comic enough. book, he was Black Kersantan, but it seems like in new oh. media, that's where that came from because he was Black Kersantan. I gotcha. But then in the book of Boba Fett, I guess he's just Kersantan. So oh. I, I completely missed that until this week. No. People can write in and say, hey, yo, this is what's up. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, Tuscan Warrior and uh, Cad Bane are the two other uh, figures that come with it. And I really was excited about that Cad Bane one. Yeah. You need to keep your nose out of places it doesn't belong. But Cad Bane, you ain't got no nose. <laughs> um, Let's see. Oh, yes. uh, Disney. Speaking of Disney, I should have yes. led with this one because that would make a nice transition. This fall, they're only doing two voyages in the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser a week. Um, so to answer the question, who could afford $6,000 for a cruise for two people? The answer is not many. Yeah. I think what they need to do, and this is what Jim Hill and his latest podcast about Disney kind of insinuated. I think it was look at, looking at Lucasfilm. Maybe it was the main one. Anyways, there, there might be a redo of the show Mm -hmm. and they might make it the popular star wars right now the mandalorian so maybe we'll see if you know the mandalorian shows up with moff gideon and stormtroopers i really think they should turn it into maybe a dinner theater or something or maybe keep it to where you can still stay on it the two days if you want to but then they can be like, oh, we're having some guests come on for dinner or something. And then those people leave. So they get to have mm-hmm. a four or five hour experience, you know, which I'd probably pay one hundred and fifty dollars for, you know, maybe even three hundred for a four or five hour experience on that thing. Uh, if you got to go explore it and you got to go do dinner and then you had to leave, it'd probably be worth it. Probably. I don't know. I it. They don't seem to be backing down from this whole cruise thing. Dude, how much? Yeah, if you had that much money invested in it, you would try to make it. You wouldn't back down either, I guess. Yeah, the first thing I would do is like I was just saying, throw the Mandalorian into that. People will just go crazy. Grogu's right. on that ship. You've got a couple days with Grogu. People mm-hmm. are gonna love it. They're gonna go. Yeah. Um, 
I've heard that Mandalorian is going to be a permanent fixture now at Galaxy's Edge. That should be a thing. Yeah. It should be, so. Yeah, and, and it just, yeah, I don't know. I, I As much as I love Galaxy's Edge, Harry Potter world kicks its butt, and uh, that, you know, everybody's playing armchair quarterback with that thing, Monday morning quarterback with Galaxy's Edge right now. Also with Galaxy's Edge, John Favreau was interviewed by IMDb. Uh-huh. Website, you know about this? No, finish it because I kind of glanced over it. So talk about okay. it. Yes. Um, he thought the Disney Park should have some sort of Razor Crest ride. Something uh, he said, "quote I'd probably do something that's very immersive. I'd probably do something with the hap- haptics worked in uh, using the assets we used in the volume. So some sort of screen ride, probably like Star Tours. I think that there should be an educational component, not but not educational like a museum." Mm -hmm. educational like sit in feel this and here's how we did it so oh i don't know if that's they've i don't think they've done anything like that before but that would be cool to go on the ride and then the next part of the ride is immersive and not immersive but like this is how we did it this is this is the screen and look what we can do and that'd be interesting because if if they keep it in Hollywood studios or whatever, you know, it would be sort of a good branch or good bridge between the two parks. Yeah. Because that's what Hollywood studios used to be. Yeah. But it's not anymore. It's more of an immersive world. <laughs> You're going into Hollywood or to the movies that you see in Hollywood. It's not a mo- working studio. Right. Unfortunately. Yeah. Good so, old yeah original charm is gone. Yeah. It's still my favorite part. Yeah, same. Seems easy. And that was before Galaxy's Edge was in it because they still had Star Wars in it. So yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. It's always been my favorite part. But there is something magical about going to Magic Kingdom. So, um, then finally, the only other thing I wanted to mention, and we'll mention this at the end of the show, uh, the Georgia Alliance of Star Wars Collectors Toy Show is May thirteenth. At Second Chance Toys and Collectibles. So if you're in town, please stop by. Uh, this is a toy show that will completely benefit the Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. Choa, we have a raffle. If you can't stick around for the raffle, uh, we're taking donations. Uh, come check out. We've got about 15 vendors plus the toy, uh, the shop right next door. Um, we've asked everyone to have some sort of Star Wars presence. So we'll have a bunch of Star Wars toys there. Uh, the the raffle will be again Star Wars related items. Uh, stop on in, check it out, have fun with us, and uh, let's rock. Yeah, be a fun weekend. It should be. It'll be a fun two months planning this thing. Oh my god! <laughs> it's well, like yeah, putting on a toy show is fun until you start planning one. Yeah, just because <laughs> and I've said this to you before, just because you go to toy shows doesn't mean you can plan toy shows. Yes. But we're doing our best, and it'll be fun. We're, we're yeah. this will be unique because it's all for the community. It's not finding anyone's wallets. Well, right. it is the vendors, but I mean, we're hanging out. We're raising money for Choa. So come yep. on up. You ready to get into uh, the next episode of The Mandalorian? Let's do it. Chapter eighteen: The Minds of Mandalore, directed by Rachel Morrison and written by John Favreau. Um. This was a good episode. I yeah. really enjoyed it, even more so on the second run. Yep. Because I watch it, and then I rewatch it to make notes and to talk about it on the podcast. So the second time around, I really did like it a lot more, and even I liked it the first time. Um, we're back on Tatooine. We're seeing land speeders racing through the city. Uh, Mos Eisley, maybe? Is that where she is? Uh, I thought it was Espa. Mos Espa. Mos Espa. Um, there's a Rodian who's uh, arguing with uh, Pelimato about his land speeder. A lot of the parts are missing, and she's threatening to kick him out into the street um, because he's just being argumentative. And then she's like, all right, fine. As a favor for you, I'll get the parts. It'll take a couple weeks. He leaves, and uh, two, uh, three Jawas come in with all the parts that's missing. The Jawas have ripped them off, and uh, they're going to repaint them and put them back on the land speeder and, and make a few bucks. Yeah. Um, which question about that? Yes, the Jawas in R five. You know, they <laughs> dropped R five off, and he had a bad motivator. Seems like 
now it's something the Jawas might have sabotaged, but that the bad motivator blew too soon. Supposed to blow, you know, a couple days in. Um, if you read from a certain point of view, which is canon, R2 made him blow his motivator because R they uh R R2 had kind of talked to him and was like, I've got this mission and I need to go here and I need to stay with my buddy. And when then when they picked R5, he blew himself up, sacrificed himself. Uh, quick tangent. There is yes. a Return of the Jedi um, tales from a certain point of view coming out this year. 40 tales for Return of the Jedi. Cool. Well, there was also an Empire. Too. Yeah, did you read that one? No, I hadn't even made it through the one from Jedi. I mean, from uh, A New Hope, and oh. I've had it for a few years. Okay. Have you read, read Yeah, I read the first one. I haven't read Empire, so I'm wondering if I should go grab that. Yeah, I probably need to finish it. It's just one of those things where, I don't know, you just Some you are better reading. than others. Yeah, and you start reading other books, and you're like, I need to finish this book, and that book gets put away, and then you forget about it. The last thing you want to hear when you need your auto insurance most is... Thank you for calling. Please listen to your list of 46 possible service options. Which is why when you choose USAA Auto Insurance, you'll get great service that is easy and reliable. 24-7 online service for claims, access to roadside assistance, and more. All at the touch of a button. Start getting the service you deserve. Get a quote today. Ability to receive a quote depends on membership eligibility. Membership eligibility and product restrictions apply and are subject to change. USAA means United Services Automobile Association and its affiliates, San Antonio, Texas. This episode is brought to you by Tinder. Meet cutes happen every day on Tinder, just not like they do in the movies. Hey, nice motorcycle. Do you have room for a plus one? I thought you'd never ask. No matter how your journey starts, if you take a chance on romance, you may join the millions of relationships that started thanks to Tinder, like the one you just heard. Explore all the possibilities for yourself. Tinder, it starts with a swipe. Download Tinder today. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, pelly has got a missing tooth. Has she always had a tooth missing? That happened in Book of Boba Fett. That's right. Yes. Uh, Cool. Moving on. <laughs> we've got that <laughs> a lot of up. stuff happened in Book of Boba Fett that people are missing. They're like, "What? Why? What? How? How'd Grogu get back to Luke? I mean, the yeah. the Din. It's like Book of Boba Fett, man. Well, Mandalorian flies in, and he's got the N one starfighter, and he says that it's faster than he knows what to do with. Grogu jumps out of the ship into Peli's arms, just like Yoda from Attack of the Clones, but also like uh, Book of Boba Fett when uh, Luke was teaching. Grogu with the force and you know doing jumps and stuff. Um, Peli says that Grogu is talking to her, saying her name, right. which means it's probably a wink wink. Uh Grogu's gonna be talking by the end of the season. Yeah. Get ready for that. They do a lot of foreshadowing in this show. Yeah, I wrote down a couple pieces of foreshadowing in this particular episode. Mando is looking for an IG circuit. Uh Peli says, Hey grandpa, they don't have made they haven't made those in a while. Um Pelly offers an R5, and uh, so that's it. We go. Well, R5 wait, wait. gets in. Before you go any further, I don't know if you had this mentioned. I'm, I'm, he goes, I don't have enough room for R5, R5 in my ship, but he was going to put IG-11 in his ship? IG can hold on to the wing or something. <laughs> <laughs> he hadn't figured that out yet. Okay. Maybe he was going to fold them up or something and put them between his legs. I don't know. Because wasn't it you or somebody else had said that that uh, no, it was another podcast I was listening to that that they thought that the IG the IG could fold up like battle droids. Yes, I think that's true. You got to fold them up, fold them up, and put them in the wing. Yeah. But anyways, uh, he takes R five. R five's got a nice oil bath. He's very clean. Very. Nice looking again, and uh, he needs R5 to test the as- atmosphere. We just need to mention that they load up, it's uh, they cut co- go from day to night, so they took all the day to pull out, you know, where Grogu was sitting in the back of the Ellen Starfighter to put back the droid encasing so R5 can jump in there. Um, and they take off and uh, they're celebrating Boon to Eve. Uh, Pelly mentioned that it's Boon to Eve, which we saw in Phantom Menace. Boon to Eve race, the pod racer race. Uh, that would have been cool to instead of the uh land speeder races to see mm-hmm. pod racers again. Yeah. I'm um, just to tie in that. But they didn't. They had 
land speeders, whatever. Uh, but there's fireworks. It's it's a great scene. It's very beautiful. I like that different look of Tatooine. But we cut back to Mandalore, and uh, Grogu is frightened by the storms and the clouds. Mando says uh, he's Mando seems very excited to be there. He says every Mandalorian can trace their roots back to the planet. Um, but he also says that it's our home planet. He's talking to Grogu, and he says that's our home planet. So he's considering Grogu as a Mandalorian. Yeah. Uh, I think so. Mando, Mando says that he grew up on the moon of Con- Concordia. Yep. That's where he grew up, which is different than the planet we saw Bo-Katan on. Bo-Katan. Yeah, I messed up on that last week. Right. Just want to clear that up. Yeah, that's same my bad. S- same system, different astro- astronomical bodies. Yes, I didn't know that I was talking about the wrong planet last week, and I thought that I was talking about this planet, and I was talking about that planet, and I got messed up, and I'm sorry. Worst podcast ever. <laughs> uh, they cut through the storms and all their navigational sensors go dark. But once they're through the clouds, they see the scorched planet. The bombs have done a ton of damage. It's screwing with the planet's magnetics. The surface is like green crystals because it's been crystallized due to the intense bombing and the heat that the surface received because of the Empire. Um he does mention they can't communicate with anyone outside the atmosphere. They're cut off from the rest of the galaxy. Wink, wink. Yeah. That's that's what that's going on there. <laughs> Just to let you know, it's, he can't call for help if something goes wrong. Oh, no. But Who will he ever find to help him? R5 is supposed to scout ahead, so R5 protests. And Mando just says, it's not a question, R5. Uh, gets down, he starts navigating through the planet, he turns a corner and he goes quiet. He's missing from radar. So Mando has to get out. He uh, pressurizes his helmet. It's pretty cool because it's a different sound of the breathing thing. It's like a remix of Darth Vader's breathing. Yeah. Well, um, you can also, um, you can hear the him him being pissed off. In he's the, annoyed. W- he's annoyed. You know, he's like, it's a thing for... For droids, this is a job for droids. <sighs> he doesn't like droids, right? Um, he gets he goes into a cave where he last saw R five on the sensors, and he he finds the civic center. He's overlooking the civic center. It's it's like a subterranean city. The place is in ruins. It's rusted. It's collapsing. Um, he's jumped by three Morlock looking creatures. Morlock are the creatures from the time machine which is one of my favorite sci-fi movies yeah classic sci-fi movies uh humans kind of broke off from evolution after a nuclear war um and they kind of evolve and i i mentioned this later in my notes Let's see if i can find that real quick because um just like and i thought this was cool because just like in the time machine after a nuclear war humans there's a group of humans that go below the surface and a group of humans that go above the surface and the ones below the surface evolve into Morlocks, oh. which they kind of have the same shape. Uh, they kind of have the long hair. Um, they're a little bit bulky because they're you know lifting rocks and stuff. Um, they also have the, the fluorescence in their eyes. These creatures in the Mandalorian have four. But it's cool that these creatures are there because similarly, Mandalorian experienced a nuclear holocaust. So now they've got these subterranean Morlock looking characters. So I thought the parallels between the two are pretty cool. I thought that was smart. Yeah. Um, they're like, well, whatever. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> whatever. I'm not going to say what the uh, filmmakers thought. Um, he's jumped by these creatures. He pulls the dark saber out. He's able to fend them off, but the weight of the, the dark saber is like throwing them around everywhere. He's just like, can't hold on to it. When he swings it, it like pulls him. Yeah, you could tell he has not trained with it. Um, but after he knocks them down, he, he knocks one over, he kills one, stabbing it. R5 is in the background. He picks up R5. They go back to the ship, and uh, they do some reading, and the planet's breathable. Um, the Empire must have used some propaganda to keep the Mandalorians broken up and saying that this planet's not safe. The Empire um, must see them as a serious threat to develop this story that their home planet is ruined. We've destroyed it. You can't go back. Um, and the only way they could do that was to spread a rumor that the planet was cursed because I really think that if they were able to go back and reform their forces, 
that they would have been a serious threat to the empire and to uh, the emperor himself. Yeah. And he knew that, and that's why they did this. Well, I mean, you can see it in Bad Batch how scheming the empire is, emperor is, so I would not put that past him. Yeah. Mando, Mando and Grogu go into the mines. R5 is back at the ship. They jump down into the civic center, and when they land, Mando tells Grogu that they're on their own and that the mines should be a little bit further down. And when he says we're on our own, it's just I think they don't have any sensor readings beyond that. Yeah. Uh, Grogu says, Echo. Like, he really says, Echo. Oh. But I interpreted that as, let's go. Oh, okay. Like, um, I think he's going to be talking in this season. So maybe it's... I'm just reading into things. But when he goes, Echo. And I thought he was like saying, let's go. Right. I, I uh, The way that they foreshadowed on this episode, I, I would definitely say that he's going to be talking this this season. They go down under the city into giant sewer tubes. They walk deep into the tunnels. Mando uses his flashlight. He has his blast ready as they're walking. Water's pouring down from the surface, and Mando says that these must lead to the mines. Grogu is scared by some lizard-looking creatures that are just hanging out in the mines. Mando... As they walk, Mando, you know, kneels down and he finds a rusted helmet, and the you hear the Mandalorian theme played. Um, he's holding it like he's Hamlet in the skull. You know, there's a shot where he's just like, you know, to be or not to be, almost. Um, but then a giant spider robot grabs and traps him, puts him in a cage. Um, we see in the front of this robot, there's a, an eye behind like a lens. Um, so we know that this thing is living, and it carries Mandalorian to a lair, and he puts the Mandalorian in, onto a spigot. Yes. Okay. Cool. <laughs> no, 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 dude. I'm sorry. It just everything. I think the evening's just hitting me. It, I can, oh, I, it, yeah. keep the energy alive. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. Mando is trapped in this cage, and Grogu follows uh, to see what's happening, and. Uh, he tries to use the four. Oh, sorry. He, he's watching. He's spying on what's happening. And the robot pops out of the spider. And he looks just like General Grievous. He's got he's got a head. He's got tubes. He's got forearms and legs. Even the uh, the spear that he's holding is one of the spears that the bodyguards use almost. Okay. He reminded me a lot of the bug creatures in one, whichever sequel or prequel. Geonosian warriors? Yes. That's what I thought he was. He comes out and he makes this noise that reminded me a lot when he first emerges, reminded me a lot of General Grievous. Okay. And so the whole time he was on screen and as he was moving, Harris and I were going, is that is that General Grievous? Is that what they're doing here? Uh, dude, I'm not going to argue that point because it may, after hearing you say that, it makes sense that it could be or at least something Personally, along those lines. I don't think it was, but the mm -hmm. line was very blurry for us. Like, right. we're just going, is that him? Is it not him? We just didn't know. I think you get your answer later on in the episode. Yeah, it's not. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's just his left brain. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of his eyes. Ah! The guy takes Mando's blaster and Darksaber and just tosses them to the side. He doesn't realize what he has. Grogu finds a quiet moment to run up to the Mandalorian, and he tries to use the Force to lift the spigot up, but he can't. Mm-hmm. Um, so he drops the spigot, just a sudden drop, which attracts the attention of this grievous guy. Mando quickly says, go find Bo-Katan, and Grogu races off. He, he's racing through the, the sewers. He nearly gets bit by one of these lizard creatures, which is revealed to have wings because mm -hmm. it starts chasing him up. Uh, one of the Morlocks tries to stop Grogu at the mouth of the cave. And this is the money shot from the trailer where Grogu just pushes the guy back. Mm-hmm. And uh, he uh, jumps into the N1 Starfighter. He points to his display. He points to Concordia, to R5. The lizard thing attacks as the ship takes off. And they're off uh, to Concordia back there. We see uh, Bo-Katan sitting in her thing, on her throne, and her droid comes up. Um, so this is, the characterization of Bo-Katan was a little off for me this episode. Okay. Because she says, let's get rid of this guy once and for all when she sees the N1 coming in. The N1 coming in. It made it seem like she was ready to kill this guy. Yeah. To get him out. Um, I don't know. 
And, and, but I then think, the rest of the episode, she's just hunky dory. Um. Well, I've got a couple of questions. It's like, does she just sit there in her in her on her throne, sulking all day, going, you know, thinking about what could have been? I guess so. Yeah, she's alone. And it's like, would you do that in full armor? Wouldn't you just do that in like a nightgown or something? Because you know that armor is uncomfortable unless they're just used to the weight of it. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess and then, so. and then, what? Oh, I think that was it. I don't know. Oh, well, I'm, I guess my question is: so we don't see Axe Wolves is that dude Mandalorian from right season two, and then he's missing later on in the rescue. And they did say that we're going to learn. You, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. Cosca Reeves was there, but Axe Wolves left, and now Cosca Reeves is not around. And so it's like, did these people realize that Mando has the dark saber, and they just like, no, we're not going to follow you anymore. You're not in charge. I, the way it sounds gonna... is is that's what it is. But I, I have a feeling the way that everything's setting up, we'll see them sometime in this season. Yeah, they said they were going to explain it, but I'm wondering if that's what's going on. They're like, we're not going to follow that guy, but we can't follow you anymore because you're not in charge. Right. They just took off. Yeah. Um, I also heard that uh, somebody asked if if we thought that Bo-Katan was flirting with Mandalorian. Yeah, we'll get to that. Okay, cool. There's some weirdness going on. Yeah. And it's tough to read the subtlety of some of these scenes Mm -hmm. is what I was having trouble with. Gotcha. Well, and then I also wanted to add how she changed. She did a complete 180. Every nobody can stand the cuteness of can fight the cuteness of baby Yoda. Yeah. Once she saw that he was in trouble, she's and Grogu was all by himself. She was like, okay, let's go. Right. And they take the gauntlet, they leave the unwind starfighter, and then they go to Mandalore. Uh, Bo-Katan gives a lot of backstory here. If you haven't watched the Clone Wars, this is your opportunity to catch up on what happened to to Mandalore. She says the planet didn't always look like this. As she comes in for a landing, we see a deep impact crater. And as the plane, as the shuttle kind of comes around for a landing, we see the scale of this, this crater. And it was just, the planet was pummeled by the Empire. Grogu guides uh, Bo-Katan back into the civic center r5 again stays with the ship and she, he's actually like watching from sensors in the ship watching them walk away yeah, I, thought he, once, I thought he was gonna lock the shit up ship up and then he's just sort of you know all language. i'm gonna watch yeah i'm gonna be a a weirdo a weirdo yeah a voyeur um, yeah uh, they go back to the Civic Center. Bo-Katan takes off her mask and says that her family used to rule all of it. Now it's a tomb. Um, it's interesting, the dichotomy between Bo-Katan and how she sees Mandalore and the Mandalorian and how he sees it. Mandalorian sees it, Din sees it as a magical place, a place of wonder, even in ruin. Bo-Katan sees it as a graveyard. Simple right. as that. But it's the same thing. So it's just kind of interesting how their viewpoints are different. Um. As as they jump down, I thought that was a cool scene with the volume, kind of like you just see like everything moving behind them as the camera kind of follows them down. I thought that was really cool. I thought that was mm-hmm. a good use of the technology. They splash down in the sewer, and Grogu's freaked out again. He's having some sort of mini panic attack because he's afraid of the lizards. But Katan understands that he's frightened. She must sense it through the force or something, but she needs him to do his job to guide her to the Mandalorian. To which the to which Grogu just kind of goes, he kind of <laughs> sputters and makes raspberries, which is like okay, <laughs> I guess that's how he deals baby. with it. But then he then he turns his flashlight on and does a complete one eighty. Yeah, um, it's probably he needed the pep talk. Like you need to focus, you need to do your job. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to be a Mandalorian right now. Yeah, and, and speaking of flashlights, it kind of bothers me that Mandalorians are using flashlights because they should have night vision in those helmets. Or at least they'd yeah. used to. Or um, something. Bo- Bo-Katan didn't. She used a flashlight, I thought. She had a flashlight. Did she? Yeah. Hmm. Um. Maybe the flashlight was for the camera. And they knew the camera was on them. And they were like, "Uh, we need to... The people at home need to see this. So let's just shine a light over there. Yeah, they broke the fourth wall. Maybe uh, Mandalorian was doing it for Grogu. <laughs> yeah, maybe. He didn't have his flashlight on then. Okay, maybe. All right, we both agree. Stop okay. yawning. I'm sorry. 
Anyways, Bo Katan. Damn time said, change. Anyway, go for it. Bo Katan says she knew a lot of Jedi. Uh, she actually said that they got along for a time. Um, they fought by uh, side by side. And she said that Grogu must be very good with the Force to be able to make it all the way back to Bo Katan. Yeah. Um, Bo sees some movement above her. Is it okay to say Bo or is it Bo Katan? I, I think Bo is fine. She sees movement above them. Uh, in the crystals, she pushes Grogu out of the way, so you know it's about to get serious because she just quietly moves him. Um, and she takes her blasters out, and three more of these Morlock creatures jump down, and she fights them. She uses her tools, her knives, her shields, her grappling hook. She takes them all out. She calls them Olamites. Uh, they used to live in the wastelands beyond their city. Uh, she says if they survive, I wonder what else has too. Dun, wink, dun, dun. wink, wink. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> oh, geez. Uh, back in, uh, for lack of a better term, Grievous's lair. Um, Grievous injects Mando with a needle, and it seems like he's starting to pull blood from M the Mandalorian's body. Grogu's, um, sorry, Din's body. <laughs> um, Mandalorian is gro groaning. Uh, Bo Katan just walks in, and she just starts blasting this this robot creature. Um, the Grievous character has the, the lightning stick that he uses to zap Bo-Katan and knocks her down as she sees that the Darksaber is on the ground. Uh, she uses her grappling hook to grab the Darksaber and ignite it, and she's fighting with it with more skill than we've seen the Mandalorian fight with in three seasons. Yeah, seasons. she... That was, yeah, that was so awesome seeing her kick butt with that... Uh dark saber and i've I, i've noticed something at least with her fighting with the dark saber maybe i i haven't i haven't seen like a jedi do it but it's like when they stab somebody with it instead of pulling it out they just shut it down the hmm. jedis do that like you know they they you put yeah, it in somebody's it gut oh, okay so she was shutting it down instead of pulling it out if you noticed yeah i didn't notice but no sorry but cool. yeah, just watching the dark saber in action is, is pretty freaking awesome. I, but when I she kills it. the, yeah, it is. It's pretty cool to see a live action dark saber. It's just such a niche little thing that it's mm -hmm. like, wow, we get this now in live action. Yep. Uh, she kills the grievous character and uh, the head pops off and it's just a little head with the eye in it. And it's a spider. It's got little spider legs and it starts crawling away. Mandalorian warns her behind you. And it's the giant spider thing. The 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 little guy got into the giant spider thing, and it's like maybe about the size of five six people. Mm -hmm. um, but Bo, it doesn't it doesn't stop Bo. She's slicing legs off. She's sliding underneath it and just cutting the belly open. Um, and then finally, we see the creature's eye go dark after a a mini battle. And uh, yeah, this thing's gone for good. Is what they're yep. trying to say. Right after. Cut, uh... High magistrate's bust falls on his head. He goes dark. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, we uh, cut to a campfire scene, and Mandalorian says that Bo was right. Mandalore is not cursed. To which Bo Katan looks around and says, "Look around." She obviously thinks it is, and there's nothing left. It is cursed. It's not what she once thought. Uh, Bo Katan makes Mandalorian some pog soup. Did we see that in the Clone Wars? I don't remember. I don't. I don't. First she time I remember him, hearing it. Yeah, she asks him if he's ever had it before, and he says no. And she said any Mandalorian worth their armor grew up on it since they were Grogu size. Bo-Katan says that Mandalorian should rest, but Mandalorian says now nah, I need to go to the mines of Mandalore and be redeemed. Despite what just happened, I have a thing to do. Bo says that these are just children's stories. Um, the Mandalorian says that he's in debt for rescuing her. But he must go to the living waters. When he said that, I'm in and I'm in your debt. I'm like, is that more wink wink? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. And then Bo offers, you know, this is the thing that was weird. She says, I'll take you there. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't know if being on the planet changed her and said, I'll be more kind to you now, because back up at the the moon or the planet that orbits around, it's in the same system. She was like, We're gonna you know, end this for once and for all. I don't want to see this guy ever again. So maybe, that was the maybe, maybe Grogu did a Jedi mind trick on her. Maybe that was the part that I struggled with. The characterization just seemed to be off. Like one minute she was upset and then 
few minutes later, she's like, all right, let's just go. I'll, I'll help you. Well, it's also human emotion, too. I mean, we can flip flop on a dime, too, if we want. Yeah. Uh, here, Bo-Katan provides some background to the Mandal to, about Mandalore. She says that uh, Mandalorian asks her if it was painful to see the city like this. And she says it's painful to see their their kind fight time after time again killing each other for reasons that they couldn't explain. It made them weak and it led to the destruction of their planet. Right. Which again, is that wink wink? Is she saying I'm open to talk and to unite our people again? If you can just cut the uh, theatrics out. Maybe. I, I like- really, uh, they foreshadowed it too much that Mandalorians will be coming back together or excuse me. They're going to at least be trying something on this somewhere in this season. Yeah. They get back to the mines of Mandalore, which it seems like the mines were not as deep as they were going. Yeah. Like it seemed like it was midway through the city and the Mandalorian was jumping too far down into the sewers. Okay. If I read that right, because it seemed like there was still some city there when they were walking into the mine. Anyways, uh, Bo Katan uh, says that she's been to the Living Waters of Strix because she was royalty. Uh, she was showered in gifts. Um, they, the the Mandalorians, loved to see the princess recite the creed as her father watched. Um, she said she knew her father was proud because she didn't embarrass him. So he was more concerned with being embarrassed than being proud of her, which was kind of sad. Mm-hmm. But then Bo says that her father died while defending Mandalore, and this moves the Mandalorian. Dune, he uh, pauses and he just like very emotionally says, "This is the way." in honor yeah. of the father, which I thought was pretty interesting. And Bo-Katan seemed moved by that too. Cause she's looking at Grogu, like, what are you looking at? <laughs> and usually you say that when you've been caught doing something like, mm. and so was she, what's going on? There? <laughs> <laughs> I don't this know. is where the romantic questions come in because okay. it's tough to read the nuance there. Uh, maybe I need to rewatch it. I do, well, I do need to rewatch it and think of it from that perspective because I totally missed it. But yeah, because it's so subtle. Mm-hmm. But it could be interpreted that way. Gotcha. Uh, we make it to the Living Waters. It's a lake on the side of steps going deep into the mines. Bo Katan says these mines date back to the age of the first Mandalore. According to f- ancient folklore, the mines were once a mythosaur lair. Mandalore the Great is said to have tamed the mythical beast. It is from these legends that the Skull Sigil was adopted and became a symbol of their planet. Wink, wink. Yeah. There's Uh, another wink. Yeah, yeah. Uh, The Mandalorian stands by the water, untalking. He removes his cape, his weapons, his jetpack, and he steps into the water reciting the creed, I swear on my name, the name of the ancestors, that I shall walk the way of the Mandalore, it was weird the way that uh, they spelled out Mandalore in the subtitles. It's M A N D apostrophe A L O R A L O R. Huh. So, Wonder yeah, if somebody I, didn't know what they were doing. I, I don't know. And the words of the Cree shall forever be forged in my heart. And then, as Bo Katan proudly watches, and she seems again honored or moved for some reason to see this. The Mandalorian is pulled under the water. Bo throws on her helmet and jumps into the water. The water is much deeper than we anticipate, and she's searching for the Mandalorian. Uh, He's deep, deep, deep down in the waters. This is like a a subterranean lake. Like It's huge. Um, She has to turn off her light to see his light from his helmet because her light was too bright, and it was polluting the water around her, the light pollution. Um, but she finds him, she grabs him, she rockets to the to the surface, but not before she sees the eye of a mythosaur. She can't believe it. She gasps and water, a bubbles escape from her helmet. She's, whoa, whoa. Um, and even with that, and they blast onto the surface, even without taking off her helmet, she's watching the water and you can just see her amazement of like, what did I just see? Yeah. I would also like to point out last week that I said the mythosaur was coming back at some point, someone's riding a mythosaur. Please remember that. Please listen to me because sometimes my instincts about storytelling <laughs> is correct. 
they the still have question. to ride them though they still have to ride the mythosaur that'll happen the first question is did the mythosaur pull the mandalorian down i don't think he did yeah i think it was probably like a dianoga yeah that pulled him down but that dianoga must have been booking it to take him that far down and maybe the Mandalorian hit his head or something on the way down too because he was knocked out. Yeah. But yeah, that's a huge mythosaur. Yeah. It was pretty cool because we didn't get full sight of it because mm-hmm. uh, it was it was in shadow and we only saw um, Bo-Katan's headlight kind of illuminate it. But what we did see was just like, oh, that's cool because that is the skull that we've seen so long for 40 years on the side of Boba Fett. Right. Well, originally it was called a Bantha skull, and then when the EU came around, they changed it to a Mythosaur. Yeah. Um, and it's tied to the Mandalorians. Right. So yeah, I'm I that was that was pretty cool to see that. Uh I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next. Uh because I mean the way that the the um trailer sees it, it's could be prime time for the pirates to show up because then it they somebody said that they there you might have said you saw din it felt like din was flying the gauntlet so that would make perfect sense for yes. the pirates to show up in either this episode or the next one when they're together and bob you know he has to fly the gauntlet so hey yeah. we did get we did also get a mention of boba fett in this episode we didn't get to see him but there was a mention of him so what was it Palimato said, hey, are you going to go see Boba Fett? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, so I was excited to see the Mythosaur. I like this episode. Um, I thought that was really, really good. Mm -hmm. Um, I understand that some people did not like the first episode of The Mandalorian. They thought it was too much setup. So I went to our Smuggler's Galaxy YouTube uh, Facebook page, and I posted something for people to... um, to say out of five stars, five being the highest, how many stars would you give the Mandalorian chapter eight, the minds of Mandalore? The audience has talked. They've chimed in. Sam, Sam said he gave it five out of five stars. Skylar gave it five, 4.5 stars after rewatching the end of the episode again. Um, it sounds like that the end of the episode really made it for him. I'm yeah. just reading into that. Ronnie Ortiz gave it five. Mark Spriggs gave it five. Casey Quaid gave it four. And Bowden gave it four. Zach Stefano said three. There were some good things in it, but overall just okay. Really love the score of this season, though. Alfonso gave it 10, so he must really, really <laughs> enjoy it if he's giving it 10 <laughs> out of five stars. And then Robert Ortiz gave it three, so it was sort of the middle of the road for him. But I was just curious to see. You know, I really like this episode. I'd probably give it a four. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe I could be persuaded for five because of that last shot of the Mythosaur, but I well, you throw in people the- thought throw in a, a a monkey lizard and you give it five yeah that's the best way to my heart <laughs> yeah i was so bored at my son's robotics this weekend that i made a meme of that drake one where he's like you know i don't want none of that he's got his hand up and it's mm-hmm. a monkey the next one he's got his hand up i don't want anything about that it's a lizard and then the next one he's smiling and pointing at the monkey lizard so it's like i don't want the monkey i don't want the lizard i want the monkey lizard anyways i thought it was a good episode and uh um it's interesting that you didn't pick up on the the romantic there's something weird going on with bo katan either she's feeling herself again being on mandalore Mm -hmm. or she's admiring a mandalorian on mandalore i don't know something weird yeah, are the fact she's he's a single dad and you know she has a thing for single dads, <laughs> or maybe the <laughs> maybe the idea uh, that he did I just lose the idea? Uh oh, <laughs> oh, getting old sucks. <laughs> maybe it's just she was su- such a hard ass and now she's mm-hmm. not a hard ass, and that's what what's going on is she's just starting to get some respect for him. Maybe it's not love or admiration; it's just. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was caught respecting this guy. Right. Or or it, it could be also be the fact that she's realizing, you know, if she wants to do what she wants to do, she has he needs she needs this guy to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I'm enjoying this season of Mandalore. Uh the Mandalorian. I'm I'm 
the rumors were that they were going to change the name at the end of this season, you know, to be more inclusive because this season was supposed to be about uniting Mandalore, Mandalorians. What, the Mandalorians? So, or some, maybe, I don't know. They changed, what was it? Uh, Winter Soldier and Falcon, the Winter Soldier and Captain America. So. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. That's what I've heard. That was the rumor for season four, but I, you know, I guess we'll see in what, what eight more weeks. We got Jesus. We already only got six more episodes. Yes. <laughs> We're almost there. <laughs> But we also have Ahsoka and uh, Skeleton Crew coming out this year, but yeah. Visions. Um, yeah, that sucks. It's almost over. <laughs> we just started. Yeah. By the time the Georgia Alliance of Star Wars Collectors Toy Show run rolls around, it's not going to be any more episodes of The Mandalorian. Oh, man. Okay, cool. Because I was, I was thinking, I'm like, man, I hadn't looked to see uh, when the season finale of Mandalorian is. Will I be in Disney when it airs? Which Six meant- weeks from now, it'll be over. Okay. Yeah. You do the math. I'll leave that up to you. I just got to look at a calendar, which I, if you're saying it'll be uh, after the meetup, then yes, I will be fine because that was when I was trying to pick the date. I, every it's like every weekend I have something going on, so you have to kind of like shoehorn it in between a bunch of stuff. So, so May ninth, April nineteenth should be the season finale. April nineteenth, okay. Yeah. Um, as we close out the show, anything else about the Mandalorian chapter eighteen? Uh I don't think so. I mean, yeah, no, I'm, I'm yeah. They've, cool. It's been some hell of hell of good storytelling, especially like I said after the crappy bad batch year we've been having. But actually, bad, the last episode, last episode was pretty cool. Yeah, it's We're it's setting to... it's setting some weird stuff up in the bad batch right now. Um, we're starting to see Crosshairs realize that a good soldier doesn't always follow orders, and he's not following orders. Like the right at the start of the episode, mm-hmm. this jerk commander comes up to him he's like why do you not have your helmet on so what they're insinuating is that a good trooper wears his helmet but here crosshairs is not following his orders he's not wearing the helmet Mm -hmm. um so he's starting to uh uh, defrost a little bit i guess yeah he's seeing how clones are being treated he's a clone and it's just like what wait what i think what's going to happen at some point the, the Bad Batch is going to get in trouble. And mm-hmm. I don't think he's going to be redeemed, but I do think he's going to sacrifice his life for the safety of his brothers and his life will end. Sorry, right. that's probably a spoiler, but I'm I'm pretty sure that might be what happens there at the end somehow. Yeah, there's a... How many will we got? Two, three episodes of that left? Yeah, but I think... They haven't announced the season three yet. Okay. Well, I mean, only, I'm... Go ahead. We're just a couple of weeks from celebration. Yeah. Um... Because they've got a lot of loose ends they need to tie up on that. Because you got to figure out what's going on with Rex and Cody and with uh, if, ec- no, it was no, it wasn't Echo. The one with the hand. Tick. 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 No, it is Echo. Is it Echo? Okay. Yeah, Tech is the the Donatello of the group. Okay, so then you got so you got those loose ends, and you got to figure out now because Crosshair shot that guy, and he's probably in the brig. We got to figure out what's going to happen with him. I can't help but make comparisons that the Bad Batch are the Ninja Turtles. Hunter is Leonardo. <laughs> He's the leader. Uh-huh. Uh, um, Wrecker is Michelangelo. He's just, yeah. oh, oh, let's have fun. There's pizza. pizza. Uh, Tech is obviously Donatello. And then Raphael mm-hmm. is the one that's always, you know, breaking off from the group. He's got a mind of his own. He's got an attitude. That's Crosshairs. Hmm. I watch it. I'm just like, that's the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Now you just need to see if they stay with the colors, if something comes up purple or. Yeah. Yeah. They don't. But uh, as we close out the show, we thought maybe we'll just start a new section. Um, It's not going to be ongoing. It's just as needed, uh, like a community board. Um, We got Eric from Hole in the Ground Productions wrote in about a Kickstarter that he's doing right now. I can't attest. This is not a personal endorsement. (laughs) of hole in the ground productions, but I do think he's been around for a while. He's got a cantina right now. If you go to hole in the ground 
Um, excuse me, there's a Cantina playset that they're working on. Um, and check that out and see if that's something you want to do. To yeah. Back. What about uh, Mr. Sam's? Yeah, I don't have that oh, up right now. But no. Mr. Sam's will be in Cincinnati this week for a Cincinnati toy show. Uh, they're not exhibiting as far as the West Virginia club, so don't look for him. But if you say hi, if you see Sam, you recognize his voice from his previous episodes. That on, I guess he's only been on one. But if you recognize his voice, say hi. Say hi to Sam it's, Sam's. It's, it's the Columbus Toy Show next Sunday, the 19th. Columbus. So I sent you to Cincinnati. Go to Columbus. Turn around. <laughs> it's only like three hours north. Three yeah. hours difference. You're That's good. It's not too far. Yeah. And then finally, the Georgia Alliance of Star Wars Collectors is hosting its first toy show on Saturday, May 13th from 11 to 4 at Second Chance Toys and Collectibles. This toy show is to benefit... The Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, also known as CHOA. The event is free to the public and we'll have plenty of vendors to shop from. This has been approved to be a 501st event. So if any of the 501st choose to volunteer, they can participate. We might have one scheduled to attend for now. Yeah. Um, we look forward to their help and all the photos that they'll post online later after the, the show. 100% of the raffle proceeds will go to the Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. We'll also be accepting donations. CHOA, if you don't know, is a not-for-profit children's healthcare system dedicating to caring for infants, children, teens, and young adults aged 0 through 21 throughout Georgia. Yep. And then don't forget about Toylana, the uh, end of this month. The what is? Let me pull my calendar up. May 24th to uh, March 24th to 26th. Yep. Georgia Toy Alliance. We'll, we'll have a booth. Stop by. We'll be there Saturday and Sunday. Say hello. Uh, we'll have QR codes up the wazoo, which means I got to make that banner stand this week. <laughs> um, I was working. I, I got the poster that we're handing out. We have a commemorative fifth anniversary poster. We have coasters that we'll be handing out. So stop by, pick up a coaster, pick up a poster. That rhymes. Um, <laughs> We'll have a poster there for the the toy show. So if you want to attend, you can just scan that th that QR code. It'll take you to the Facebook page. You can find it real easy. RSVP. We'd love to have you out there and, and have your support. So yeah, it's gonna be a busy few months. And also the hole in the grounds production thing was the reason why we decided to do the community board to try to fit it in. It's not the toy show, so it might seem like it was self serving that we created this thing to self serve ourselves and have a way to promote the show, but that's really not how it happened. Right. But because of it, we're promoting the, the toy show. So check us out, May 13th. Exactly. Awesome. Anything else? I think that's it. Nothing too exciting. The show. Well, you're 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 doing the recaps or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. there wasn't a whole lot to speak of. You know, it's yeah. just sort of you go through it. You know, when when Sabine and Hera show up, then then I'll do a lot more talking. You'll take over. You'll take yeah. over. Yeah. Would have been cool if in the living water Sabine was there. <laughs> it would have been right. Or, or like you see Sabine take off in the Phantom Three right as uh, he lands on Bo Katan's planet. Yeah, yeah, right, awesome, awesome. Thank you for listening to the Smuggler's Galaxy podcast. If you could please leave a like and a five star review of the show anywhere you listen to podcasts, if allowed, it really helps us out and points people to our show. You can follow us on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Send us an email or message us. We'd love feedback. We'd love to make you part of the show. Our email address is smugglersgalaxy at gmail.com. Thank you to Alfonso Riviera for the Smuggler's Galaxy logo. You can find him at Rock the Force Podcast. And thank you to Levi Waterhouse for the music. Hasbro, re release VC66, hashtag vote with your wallet, pass on what you've learned, be a positive force in the collecting community. This is the way. This is the way. Oh, also, if you hear an ad from us this week, we recorded in a parking lot. Um, we used Glenn's phone to record it, and we used my phone for the script. So that's why I got a little lost, if you hear that. Like, I had to find out where we were in this massive block of text. So It's so bad it's good. But if, if, awesome. you, en if you enjoyed my original Anchor ad, you'll totally enjoy this one. <laughs> hey, I was included, so. Yeah. Yeah, yes. This is the way. This is the way. I guess that's what happens. You need to pre-read scripts, but yeah, what's pre-reading? What's well, production? Well, we pre-read it, but it was days later <laughs> that yeah. we actually read it. Yeah. <laughs> and you were like, let's do it real quick. I had my keys out. I was ready to jump in the car. You had Jason's your keys like, out. Jason's like, come on, man. 
So we did it. Yeah. It's, it's All time right. to go eat dinner. It's time for dinner.